Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog on a subject suggested by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is how much backstory do you prefer? Uh, I have, as regular listeners might expect, a dual perspective on this issue. But first, to define terms, I'm going to take backstory as being anything that isn't part of a plot arc in the book. So the main plot, character subplots, chunks of arc that stretch from the previous book and lead into the next book in a series are all not backstory. Flashbacks that set up an event that happens in the book's primary timeline, whilst they are history, aren't backstory for me. So backstory would be the events of the character's life that influence them. So why they choose to do what they do, rather than why the plot specifically happens the way it does. And similarly, events affecting a location. So a murder at a shopping centre in a book about a series of murders would probably be plot. But if it means that people tend to avoid the shopping centre in a book that isn't actually a crime thriller, then it could well be backstory because it's influencing events but isn't actually something that drives the plot forward. And obviously there's a fuzzy line there. So make of the boundary what you will. But uh, returning to my twofold perspective, there are two levels of backstory that I want. The amount that the author knows and the amount that appears in the book. And I like the sense that the characters and events are happening in a larger world than just the book. So whilst I don't want someone to have worked out who lives at every single house on every single street in an entire city, what colour everyone's hair is, what the middle name of the shopkeeper who appears once in chapter four is, I do want the characters to have had a life before the book starts so that they are their reactions are driven by their experiences rather than their experiences being written in to create a reason for things to happen when the author realizes that the character is now going to do something and there should be an influence that causes them to pick option A over option C or to fear option A but still do it. So I like that. So an amount of backstory sufficient to how important the character or location is so that the writing of it is a perspective on a larger view rather than writing just the bits that are in the book which can leave things a little bit neat and tidy and which is also my primary driver for how much backstory I like to be revealed whether things are too neat and tidy 
in real life, if someone has had a tragic past, they've had a defining moment, sometimes they might talk about it a lot. If they've had a religious experience, they might want to share it with people. But even people who are quite evangelical about their defining moment don't tend to describe the whole thing, particularly after they've been shaping their life around it for a while. They tend to cut down to thinking about what's right to do, but saying just a little thing. So if you ask them, why did you do that? They're going to say it's the ethical thing to do. They're not necessarily going to tell you their whole religious experience, how when they were eight, this happened and it was a miracle. So the backstory that drives their decision and the backstory that's revealed to the reader at the point they make the decision are different levels of detail. Giving the whole thing doesn't feel very realistic and because prose can't utterly recapture the fact that the human brain can relive a moment very quickly. Whereas to read a description or to speak a description takes longer than the amount of time it takes the person to relive it because it's relived in little snippets. So it changes the flow of the story. If someone panics because of a phobia, they won't necessarily describe the whole phobia. They'll panic and go. They might experience events that led to the phobia, but they won't talk about them. And putting it into internal dialogue, whilst it takes away the quote marks, still has the same chunk of events about it. So it's very difficult to, in any way, to integrate that into the scene that doesn't have fast moving event, fast moving event, fast moving event, trigger. And now we'll go and do something else for several paragraphs and then fast moving event again to loo it loses the tension. So I prefer the backstory to be small snippets that I can put together that make what is happening now seem plausible and then later maybe if there is a reason that the reader needs to know why the character panicked and fled, bring in the reasons in more detail then when the after the events have occurred so they form a counterpoint they add more detail they validate my understanding of how the character might behave in the future by showing that the reason that the author already knew was there is a good one but front-loading it, the backstory should only be enough to stop the events being unexpected. So if a character suddenly runs away because there's a stuffed bunny rabbit on the table, there needs to be some indication that that's going to be a significant thing. But before they run. But it doesn't need to be the whole why they're doing it at that particular point, which is something that can be taken to extremes. I like much of Stephen King's work, but 
the longer his books are, the more he has the bunny rabbit on the table and people running away from it without giving the reader any new backstory in terms of depth rather than breadth. Take it. Lots and lots of things about people cycling past houses and remembering cycling past houses and being scared at the memory of cycling past houses or looking at a window and being scared about the idea of climbing through the window and on and on and on and suddenly he gives you a new fact but it's lost under the mass of people being scared about things that they haven't explained so that's not enough backstory it doesn't develop so he's got not telling us what's ultimately going on straight away downright but i found the book too much there is this massive backstory but i'm not going to tell you anything that will help you work out what it is other than the fact it's scary so a little bit of balance create a backstory and then give it to the reader in small palatable chunks so they can start putting the story together themselves and do give it to the reader. Well, that's my vague and rambling points made, I think. So toodaloo.